Hi, good afternoon everyone. For this session, we're going to take relevant costing for short-term decisions. For this session, we're going to take relevant costing for short-term decisions. I would like to start the discussion with the function of decision-making. Remember what decision-making is. Decision-making is the process of choosing among competing alternatives available. Decision-making is the process of choosing among competing alternatives available. Remember that decision-making is a management function. It's one of the activities that managers are supposed to do. It is not a function of the management accountant. Again, decision-making is a management function. It's one of the activities of managers, not of the accountants. The role of the accountants is to is basically a support role. Tulungan lang yung management. The accountants can accomplish the support role by providing information that matters to the decision. So that's the role of the accountant. Kailangan yung information na kinakailangan para gumawa ng decision inayos ng accountant. Hindi mismo yung accountant yung gagawa ng decision. Ang trabaho ng accountant provide information that matters to the decision. So what do we mean by info that matters to the decision? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng matters to the decision? Whenever we talk about information that matters to the decision, we basically mean the relevant information. Okay? So, let's take one step backward first. Information can be qualitative. This is the info that cannot be put into numbers. Or quantitative. Information that can be put into numbers. When it comes to information, it can be qualitative. It cannot be put into numbers. Quantitative, which means it can be expressed in numerical form. Under quantitative info, a subset of this is financial info. May mga numero na pwedeng i-express as peso. We call that financial information. As accountants, we would basically deal with, most of the time, financial information. So, whenever I talk about costs in the future, I can, I can uh, whenever I, I'll talk about costs in this discussion, what I mean is in financial information in general, but I'll just use the word cost. So, again, the role of the management accountant is merely support in decision-making. Provide info that matters to the decision. And what are these information that matters to the decision? Okay, we call them relevant information. As accountants, we would deal most of the time financial info. So I'm going to introduce the concept of relevant costs. The cost that matters to the decision, we call them the relevant costs. Now, what are the requisites for costs to be relevant? Para masabi natin na may kinalaman yung cost information sa decision, number one, it should be incurred in the future. And number two, it should differ among the alternatives. For cost to be relevant, number one, it is supposed to be incurred in the future. And number two, it should differ among the alternatives. These two requisites must concur in order for cost to be considered relevant. Para masabi natin na talagang relevant yung cost, dapat parehas siyang to be incurred in the future and differ among the alternatives. These two must concur. If one of them is not true, matik, hindi na relevant yung cost. Again, we only provide information for decision support that matters to the decision. If the information has nothing to do with the decision, we should not include it in the report. What are these info that matter to the decision? The financial info that matters to the decision are said to be relevant. So I'm going to introduce the concept of relevant costs. 
for cost to be relevant in the decision, number one, it is supposed to be incurred in the future. Number two, it should differ among the alternatives. Both of these must concur for cost to be deemed relevant. Okay? Sige nga. I want you to imagine the following decision problem. Should you take up a master's degree? Okay? I want you to think about this decision problem. Should you take up a master's degree? The first question is, what are your options? In this decision problem, what are your options? Okay, so your decision options are basically yes or no only. No? Your decision options are basically just yes or no. So in making a decision of whether to yes, take up the master's degree or no, wag natin i-take ang master's degree, we will come up with different information pertaining to this decision. And among those information are costs. So let us talk about the tuition fees. Is the tuition fees relevant? For costs to be relevant, it should be incurred in the future and differ among the alternatives. Will tuition fees be incurred in the future? The answer is yes, right? Will tuition fees be differ, different among the alternatives? The answer is yes. You will incur this only if you take up the master's degree. You will not incur this if you will not take up the master's degree. So, yung dalawang requisite, pasado yung tuition fees. Therefore, this is relevant. Will this be incurred in the future? Yes. Kapag yes yung sinabi mo. Okay? Will this differ? Yes. Gagastusin mo lang to kapag kukunin mo yung master's degree. Kung hindi mo kukunin yung master's degree, edi hindi mo to gagastusin. It's incurred or to be incurred in the future and will differ among the alternatives. So yes, tuition fees will be relevant in answering this question. Second cause, bad soap. No? Bad soap. In the problem of whether you take up the master's degree or not, let us talk about the cause of the bad soap. Will it be incurred in the future? Yes, mukha naman talagang bibili ka ng bad soap, no? Mukha naman bibili ka pa ng bad soap sa future. So the answer is yes. However, the next question, will it differ among the alternatives? Kung ako tatanungin nyo, ang sagot ko ay no. Whether you're going to take the master's degree or not, gagastusin ko pa rin yung bad soap. Maliligo ako kahit anong mangyari. Kukunin ko yung master alo, hindi. Talagang maliligo pa rin ako. So, although bad soap is a future cost, pasado siya sa first requisite, the problem is, number two, it will not be different among the alternatives. So, again, those two should concur. Kung isa doon hindi pumasa, no? isa doon hindi, siya, hindi niya pinasa, particularly the second question this time, the cost is therefore not relevant. No? This cost of the bad soap will not be relevant. Should you take up the master's degree? Yes or no? Will you incur bad soap in the future? Yes. Will it differ among the alternative? Uh, hindi ko alam para sa inyo, no? Pero para sa akin, the answer is no. Whether you'll answer yes or no, ako maliligo pa rin ako. Ha? Huh? Okay. So, bad soap is not relevant. So, again, these two requisites must concur. Kung isa sa kanila ay hindi, edi hindi na relevant yung cost, no? So, it is to be incurred in the future and differ among the alternatives, no? And differ among the alternatives. That is what will make cost relevant. Okay? Other cost concept that will be helpful as we discuss this topic. The concept of sunk cost. What is a sunk cost? 
A sunk cost is a cost incurred in the past. Ang first requisite ng relevant cost, it is to be incurred in the future. So, automatically, sunk cost is irrelevant in any decision. Sunk cost being cost incurred in the past is irrelevant, not relevant in any decision. Be careful not to be attached to this. While in problem solving, it is easy to spot a sunk cost, cost that is incurred in the past. In the personal life, sunk cost tends to blur our vision. Minsan may mga bagay na ginastusan natin kaya nagiging committed tayo kahit na hindi na nakabubuti sa atin. So in the real world, we tend to be attached to sunk cost. Ay, ang laki ng ginastos ko dito. Dapat tuloy pa rin ako. E paano kung hindi talaga gagana yan para sa'yo? So, be careful not to be attached to sunk cost. Okay? This can actually distort your decision making. Tandaan nyo, your decision can only change the future. Anything that was incurred in the past can no longer be changed by our present decision making. Kung ginastos na yan dati, hindi mawawala yan sa decision natin ngayon. Nangyari na yon. Okay? Again, some cost being cost incurred in the past is always irrelevant in any decision. Next, we have the principle of opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is the foregone benefit of choosing one alternative over the other. Opportunity cost is the foregone benefit of choosing one alternative over the other. So, if you have two choices, no? two options, once you choose one of them, you will not benefit from the gains of the other. Option A or option B. Pag pinili mo si A, hindi mo kikitain yung kay option B. Pag pinili mo si B, mawawala sa iyo yung pagkakataon kumita dun kay Opportunity cost is the foregone benefit of choosing one alternative over the other. You have to understand that opportunity cost is not recorded in your accounting records. No? It's not recorded in the books. Wala yan sa accounting records. But this can be relevant in your decision. Why? Because for a lot of times, opportunity cost would differ no? among the alternatives. Pag pinili mo yung isa, mawawalan yung ano man yung pwede mong kitain sa kabila. This is not recorded in the books, but this can be relevant. Okay? Now, we are going to apply what we are going to learn, what we are going to apply what we have learned in short-term decisions. Okay? We will apply what we learn in short-term decisions. Ano ba tong short-term decisions na to? Okay, financially, the goal is to maximize current year profits. Okay, ano yung short-term thinking? Pag short-term thinking tayo, ito lang yung goal natin. Maximize the current year profits. That's the meaning of short-term decisions. So, if we are into short-term decisions, financially, the goal is just to maximize the current year profits. Okay? So, wag nyo munang isipin yung mga long-term goals. The growth of the company, shareholders, wealth. We will have time for the long term. In the short term, the goal is simply to maximize current year profits. That is the short term view. Okay? Sige, let us answer this one. I'll give you one minute. In the decision making process, what do we mean by differential cost? Go. Okay, what is the answer? In decision-making process, the differential cost is answer, letter B as in boy. When we say the costs are a differential, it would change among the alternative courses of action. The cost will be incurred in one 
alternative but will not be incurred in the other. So that is what we mean by differential cause. Cause the changes among the alternative courses of action. Ma-incur siya sa isa pero hindi sa kabila. Second question. A relevant cause can best be described as A relevant cause can best be described as blank. One minute. One minute. A relevant cause can best be described as blank. Okay. As always, you may pause the video if you're still thinking. Okay, think before you... Uh, wait, no? Think before you uh, listen to the answer. So, pause muna kung hindi nyo pa nabasa. The correct answer is letter C. For cause to be relevant, number one, it should be incurred in the future. Number two, it should differ for each option available to the decision maker. So, the description highlighted in letter C pertains to the second requisite. No? Anong ga ulit ang meaning ng relevant cause? A relevant cause is a cause that is number one, to be incurred in the future. And number two, differ among each alternative. So, letter C is the correct answer. Okay? I want you to answer the next problem. The question is, research and development costs for Euron's two new products are Go. Okay, you may pause the video if you haven't answered yet. Huron Industries has recently developed two new products, a clearing unit for laser disc and a tape duplicator for reproducing home movies taken with a video camera. However, Huron has only enough plant capacity to introduce one of these products during the current year. The company controller has gathered the following data to assist management in deciding which product should be selected for production. Anyway, there is a lot of given in this problem, but the question it will boil down to, what is research and development cost for the two new products? The correct answer is letter boy. The only relevant line, uh, the only relevant line here is the first line of the paragraph. Kung titingnan ninyo, ang kailangan nyo lang impormasyon, Euron Industries has recently developed two new products. The fact that it is already developed means that it was already incurred. No? Past tense to ha? The word develop here is past tense. No? So Euron Industries has recently developed two new products. So from the word develop, which is past tense, it was already incurred. The research and development cost was already incurred. So research and development cost for the two new products will no longer change in the future. Na incurred na yan, no? Nakapas tense na yan. Nangyari na yan. It was already incurred. There is nothing we can do about it anymore. Kung papalpak yung tape duplicator, papalpak yung cleaning unit, iiyak na lang tayo 
hindi na magbabago kung magkano yung ginastos nating research development. Okay? So that is boy a sunk cost. It should not be considered in any decision. Okay. How about this one? I'll give you one minute. Okay, so each week Oracle Oil incurs total cost of $214,000 to process several tons of olives into olive oil. The firm can then spend $15,000 to bottle the oil as is or it can spend $20,000 to add flavoring to the oil and then bottle it. In the weeks ahead, Oracle expects its cost of purchasing empty bottles to increase by $3,000, cost of purchasing flavorings to decrease by $1,000. Oracle CFO asks you what, if any, role these cost changes should play in the firm's decision of which product to manufacture and how would you respond. So there are two options here. No? The issue is what product to offer. Are we going to offer the oil as is? Or are we going to process it further by adding flavoring? In either option, we will bottle the oil. Sa parehas na option, bibili tayo ng bottle, ilagay natin yung oil sa bottle. So the cost of the bottle is irrelevant. Whether you're going to choose sell immediately as is or add flavoring, the bottling cost will be the same. Hindi yan magbabago. Ano naman ang magbabago? Ang magbabago, yung flavoring. The flavoring will only be added if you process further. So yung flavoring na yan, it's a differential cost. Remember, for cost to be relevant, it should be incurred in the future and differ among the alternatives. So we will incur them in the future. Bottling and flavoring. Pero yung bottling, parehas lang whether you sell or process further. The flavoring will be incurred only if you process further. It will not be incurred if you sell immediately. So the answer is dog. You should tell the CFO that the change in bottling costs need not be included in the firm's incremental analysis of which product to manufacture. Although, the change in the flavoring costs must be factored in. Bottling cost changes? Ignore it. Change in the flavoring cost? Consider it in the analysis. Correct answer is D as in dog. Okay? How about this one? I'll give you another one minute.
you are considering upgrading the mixing machine for your bakery. The old mixer costs $600. The new mixer costs $750. The old mixer has a capacity of 8 quarts. The new mixer has a capacity of 10 quarts. In addition, the new mixer comes with an additional attachment that you did not have with your old mixer. Purchasing just the additional attachment for the old mixer would cost $50. You have also identified a startup restaurant that would purchase your old mixer for $200. Which cost is a sunk cost? The answer here is letter boy, the cost of the old mixer. Yung old mixer na yan, binili mo na yan nung isang araw pa. No? You bought this years ago already. Whatever decision you're going to make now, it will not change the fact that you bought this old mixer already. Binili mo na to. Magkano man yung ginastos mo, hindi mo na mababago yon. So kahit ano pa mangyayari, nagastos na yon. The cost of the old mixer is a sunk cost and therefore should be ignored in whatever analysis we will make to make a decision no or to recommend management what decision to make okay sang cost na yung old mixer okay so dito sa decision making kapag magpresent tayo ng information we should look at the additional cost or revenue ang tawag sa additional cost or revenue marginal no marginal or incremental cost and revenue Okay? Magkaibang bagay yung average tsaka incremental cost. Let's start with average cost. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng average cost? Let us answer this one. Based on the following info, what is the average fixed cost of producing 26 units? When we talk about average cost, we take the cost and spread it out to the units involved. 26 units produced, pinapakuha sa atin yung average fixed cost. So pag average fixed cost, 600 lang yan, divided by 26 units. That would be 23.08 per unit. The correct answer is D or DOG. Anong pinapahanap? Average fixed cost. Pag tinatanong yung average cost, isama nyo yung total variable cost. Kung ang tanong ay average cost, you would include the variable cost as well. 842.4 plus 600 divided by 26. But in this question, you're only going to take the average fixed cost of producing 26 units. So only the $600 will be spread out among the 26 units. The answer is DOG 23.08. Follow-up question. If you are asked about the marginal cost, no? marginal cost of producing the 28 unit, ano bang meaning ng marginal cost? Ang meaning ng marginal cost incremental. No? The meaning of this is incremental or additional cost. So when we produce the 28 unit, no? when we produce the 28 unit, the fixed cost will not change. So what's the additional fixed cost? Zero lang. Pero yung variable cost, aangat. From 874.8, it becomes 907.2 our variable cost will increase by 32.4. Wala ata sa choices, no? Wala sa choices na binigay ko. Pasensya na. Ha? So, correction na lang, ha? The correct answer for the second, uh, this question, no? Marginal cost of producing the 28 unit is supposed to be 32.4. Unfortunately, I did not include the actual answer in the choices. So, the answer must be 32.4. The meaning of marginal cost is incremental or additional cost. 27, this, this is the cost. 28, this is the cost. Take the difference. Umangat yung cost ng 
that's the meaning of marginal cost. So whatever we are discussing right now, we're going to implement it in the short-term decisions. Okay? So wag muna tayo ma-pressure about shareholders wealth. Wag natin munang i-pressure sarili natin sa impact in the long run. Let us simplify our analysis. Our analysis should be geared towards the goal of just maximizing the current year profits. Pag sinabi ko yung short-term view, ang pakialam mo lang, kumusta ang magiging profits at the end of the year. Financially, the goal is to just maximize the current year profits. We will apply what we learn in the following types of short-term decisions. Accept or reject a special order. Make or buy a needed component. Keep or drop a product line or segment. Sell or process further and prioritizing the use of constrained resources. So whatever we have discussed so far, they will be they will be applied on these types of decisions. So without further ado, we will begin accepting or rejecting a special order. We'll apply what we learn in accepting or rejecting a special order. So what do we mean by a special order? First and foremost, let's define special order. It is a sales order with terms different from those of regular sales. Pag sinabi nating special order, it is a sales order with terms different from those of regular sales. Ang special order ay minsanan lang. It's not expected to happen again. Ha? A special order is not expected to happen again. This is a one-time event only. When we face a special when we face the decision of whether to accept or reject a special order, this is the template that we are going to follow. Take note. If we reject the special order, nothing will happen. Kung tatanggihan natin yung special order, no? Walang mangyayari. Kunyari, lumapit yung potential customer. Pwede ko bang bilhin ito one time lang? Dadamihan ko. Hingi sana ako ng discount. Less 5 pesos. Papayag ba tayo? If we reject the order, nothing will happen. Okay? Ay, ayoko. Masyadong mababa yung presyo na yan. So what's the change in your profit? Zero. But if you accept the order, something will happen. May mangyayari kapag tatanggapin natin yung order. If we accept the order, the sales revenue will increase. Kasi meron kang revenue pag may, be may benta ka. No? So sales revenue will increase. Your cost will also increase if you cater the order. Take note, just look at the incremental cost. Yung bang mga cost na aangat dahil tatanggapin mo yung order. The cost that will be incurred only because you will accept the order. We call that incremental cost. When the problem is silent, the incremental cost would constitute only all the variable costs. Kapag silent yung problem, pag sinabi nating incremental cost, lahat yan ay variable cost lang. And then, if we accept the order, tapos ubus na yung capacity natin, there might be opportunity cost. If we accept the order and we're running out of capacity, it's possible to have opportunity cost. Yung mga regular sales, baka isa-sacrifice natin kung tatanggapin natin yung special order. So, meron tayong opportunity cost. Look at the effect on profit. Will the profit be positive? Will the profit be positive? If yes, accept the order. If the profit will be negative, then just reject the order. Lugi tayo. Uh, yan ay recommendation lang, no? Ultimately, yung decision kung accept or reject a special order, nandyan yan kay manager. No? Remember that ultimately, the decision of what to do belongs to the manager. No? It's the job of the manager. We as accountants are only showing the information relevant to this decision and a recommendation. The final decision will be made by the manager. Okay? 
I'll give you two minutes to answer this one. Go. Okay, so the question is, should the company accept the special order? Let's answer. A company currently sells 6,000 units per month and has received a special order from an international customer. The international customer would like to purchase 1,500 units for a price of $80 per unit. Company currently sells the product to regular customers for 95 per unit. The company has excess capacity to produce the special order. The product unit cost is shown below. Product unit cost is shown below. Fixed manufacturing overhead totals 35k per month. Management has determined that the additional shipping cost for the international delivery would be $4 per unit. Question, should the company accept the special order? If we reject the order, nothing will happen. Ano mangyayari kapag magre-reject tayo ng order? R is for rejection. If we reject the order, zero change in profit. If we accept the order, A is for acceptance. What would happen? the sales revenue would go up. Yun nga lang, yung regular price kasi natin, 95. No? If we accept the order, ang hinihingi niya, babaan daw yung presyo sa 80. Yun lang yung problema, no? 80 daw. 80 times 1,5, the added revenue will be $120,000. Now, hindi lahat ng cost aangat kapag tinanggap mo yung order. Only incremental or marginal costs would increase if you accept the order. When the problem is silent, fix is fixed. No? Your fixed overhead costs will not change kasi fix yan. Allocation lang to 350 per unit. Yung aangat lang mga variable costs. 4950, 1650, and 950. DM, DL, and VOH together with additional shipping cost of $4. That would be 79.5. Okay? 79.5 times 1,500 units. Your incremental cost is 119,250. 119,250. Yan yung incremental cost natin. Now, the company has excess capacity to produce the special order. Meaning to say, we will not sacrifice regular sales if we cater this order. Wala tayong isa-sacrifice na regular sales kapag tatanggapin natin yung order na to. That being said, we have zero opportunity costs. Accepting the special order would mean our profit will increase by 120k minus 119250, $750. Correct answer is letter A. We recommend that the company would accept the special order because the operating income will increase. By how much? Based on our calculation, it will increase by $750. Ganun tayo mag-isip pagdating sa special order sales. No? Ganun tayo mag-isip pagdating sa special order sales. Next, how about this one?
Okay, everyone, please enter your answers. Okay na? Everyone, please finalize rather. Enter. Wala pala kayo, no? Everyone, please finalize your answers. The loss of a key customer has temporarily caused Bedford Machining to have some excess manufacturing capacity. Bedford is considering the acceptance of a special order. One that involves Bedford's most popular product. So we have freed up capacity. Consider the following types of costs. Which one of the following combinations of cost types should be considered in the special order acceptance decision? When the problem is silent, the only incremental cost would be the variable cost. Fixed cost is not incremental. It would stay the same. Yan yung general rule. Exception, may mga fixed cost kasi na fixed siya for the order. Direct fixed cost associated with the order is therefore incremental. So ano yung general rule natin? Pagdating sa fixed cost, hindi siya incremental. Ano ang exception? Ang exception kapag yung fixed cost, ginastos yan dahil, no? dahil doon sa special order, that would be considered an incremental cost. Now, according to number 4, the temporary idle capacity has an alternative use. So magkakaroon tayo ng opportunity cost, right? The opportunity cost of the temporarily idle capacity should be considered. So, nawalan ka nga ng customer. Pero sabi sa number 4, pwede mo daw gamitin itong capacity sa ibang bagay pa. That is an opportunity cost. So, pag gagamitin natin sa ibang bagay, magkano yung kikitain natin? So, if you will accept the special order instead of doing that, you would lose the opportunity of earning such, no? Yung alternative ng special order. This can be a relevant cost. 1, 3, and 4. Correct answer is letter C. So the combination of cost types that should be considered in the special order acceptance decision is letter C. 1, 3, and 4. Let us answer the next one. Okay, finalize your answers. Again, pause nyo lang ha, kapag hindi nyo pa nagawa. Pause nyo lang kapag hindi nyo pa nagawa. Game, 
Jordan Company budgeted sales of 400,000 calculators, $40 per unit for the year. Variable manufacturing costs were budgeted at $16 per unit. Fixed manuf costs at $10 per unit. A special order offering to buy 40,000 calculators for $23 each was received by Jordan in March. Jordan has sufficient plant capacity to manufacture the additional quantity. However, the production would have to be done on an overtime basis at an estimated additional cost of $3 per calculator. Accepting the special order would not affect Jordan's normal sales. No selling expenses would be incurred. What would be the effect on operating profit if the special order is accepted? So the effect on the operating profit if the special order is accepted. So let's try rejecting it. Okay, pag reject yung order, talagang wala. Zero. No? Pag reject yung order, zero change. Pag in yung order, may mangyayari. No? May mangyayari. Revenues will increase by 23 times 40K. Uh, yun yung special price niya, no? Humingi siya ng tawad. Ang laki, no? From 40, 23 na lang. 23 times 40K, it's 920,000. Now, the cost that we'll incur will only be the variable cost when silent. So, itong 16 lang. Kaso, i-overtime daw to, no? Para naman magawa itong units, kailangan i-overtime. Additional 3 per calculator. 16 plus 3 is 19. 19 times 40,000 is 760,000 dollars. Now, walang opportunity cost sa problem na to. Hindi naman daw magsasacrifice ng regular sales, no? This will have to be done on an overtime basis. Ibig sabihin nun, meron namang sufficient plan capacity, pero para magawa to kailangan yung overtime. E yung sahod ng overtime, mas malaki. So, plus 3. No? 16 plus 3 is 19 times 40k, 760,000. Wala kang sacrifice na regular sales. So, you would have an incremental profit of $160,000. The correct answer is dog. $160,000 increase. That's the consequence of accepting the special order. Okay. Think well before you finalize your answer for this one. Think well before you finalize your answer for this one. Okay, for a firm that has excess capacity, a special order pricing decision should blank. Okay, take note ha, yung words na ginamit niya, it has excess capacity. Ibig sabihin, walang opportunity, cost. So letter A cannot be the answer because this firm has excess capacity. May sobra siyang uh, factory time, no? machine hours, may sobra siyang machine hours. So, walang opportunity cost dito. Hindi ka mawawalan ng sales sa regular customers. So, if there's an excess capacity, no need to consider opportunity cost. The pricing decision should compare all the relevant costs to the special order price. As always, may excess capacity man o wala, i-compare mo yung special order price sa lahat ng relevant costs. No? Dapat kayang makover ng special order price, lahat ng relevant cost. Correct answer here is B as in boy. B as in boy. Okay. I'll give you time for this one.
Okay, Aren's Tech incurs cost of $33 per unit, 21 variable, 12 fixed. To make a widget, it normally sells for $58. Aren's has received two special offers. Offer is given by Wholesaler A to buy 9,000 units at $46 each. Wholesaler Boy who offers to buy 15,500 units at $42 each. Assuming Arens has the capacity to accept only one of these offers, which one should it accept? So what you're going to do is to compare your incremental profit for A and incremental profit for B. Kay A, 46 minus 21 times 9,000 units. Kay B, the price is 42 minus 21 times 15,500. No? 42 minus 21, 15,500. If you will compare their incremental profit, you would conclude that dog Arens should accept offer B because it will result in $100,500 more in net income than offer A. Correct answer is D as in dog. Okay? Now let us talk about setting a special price. No? Setting a one-time special price. I'll give you a few minutes for Kator Company. Okay, you may pause, no? You may pause this question first as I will explain. Please make sure you have a tentative answer. No? Please make sure you have a tentative answer before listening to the solution, ha? Huh? As always. Kator Company is a manufacturer of industrial components. One of its products that is used as a subcomponent in auto manufacturing is KB96. This product has the following financial structure per unit. Selling price of 150, then the total cost is 90. Breakdown given. Qatar Company has received a special one-time order for 1,000 KB96 parts. Assume that Qatar is operating at full capacity and that the contribution margin of the output that would be displaced by the special order is $10,000. Using the original data, the minimum price that is acceptable for the one-time special order is in excess of? Okay. So, our minimum price should at least give us zero losses. Kahit wala tayong kita, ang importante, yung profit natin at least zero. No? At most, ah, at least, no? at least zero. Hindi dapat magkaroon ng lugi. So, how much will be our opportunity cost? 
based on the given, the opportunity cost because of the displaced, no? displaced sales is $10,000 in total. Yan yung opportunity cost. $10,000 yung mawawala, ah, mawawalang contribution margin sa atin galing sa regular sales. No? This is the CM of the output that would be displaced by the special order. Yan sana yung kikitain sa regular sales na hindi na natin kikitain kung tatanggapin natin yung special order. Now, <coughs> pardon me, what about the incremental cost? If we take the special order, we will spend 20 on DM, 15 on DL, 12 on VOH, and then, yung $3 shipping and handling. Kasama ba yan? Kasama ba yan? Of course, no? That is also a variable cost. So, that's a total of $50, no? 20 times, 20 plus 15, plus 12 plus 3. $50 yung incremental cost. Ito, variable to, ha? variable shipping and handling. So, what would happen is, you would have to set revenue. No? Your revenue should be in such a way that all the costs will be covered. So, kung ang total nito, 50k at 10k, 60k, yung revenue natin at least 60,000. The special order is for 1,000 units of KB96 parts. So, 60,000 divided by 1,000 units is $60. Yan yung special price natin dapat. At least, no? Minimum yan, ha? Minimum of 60. So, the correct answer is letter A. The minimum price that is acceptable for this one-time special order is a price in excess of $60. This is the correct answer. Okay? This is the correct answer. Okay? So, yan na ha? Yan yung tamang sagot. Ang shortcut nito sa minimum price, i-add mo yung incremental cost saka opportunity cost. So, na-calculate natin yung incremental cost kanina. 20, 15, 12, and 3. Incremental cost is 50. Ang opportunity cost naman, 10,000 yung total. Over 1,000 units in the special order, that's 10. 50 plus 10, $60. Okay? 50 plus 10, $60. So this is the answer for Kator Company. Letter A. Okay. How about this one? I'll give you two minutes for this one. <coughs> 